Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Colin Weaver. CISSP questions of the day. Because you want to get your CISSP exam. CISSP wannabe. All right. Here come two questions for you. Question number one today is, which of the following is a benefit of implementing DNSSEC? Here comes a bunch of answer choices with a lot of words. Click pause. Read them over. Click pay when you're ready. And we can talk about DNSSEC. The first answer choice says, using encryption, DNSSEC prevents service providers from mining your DNS queries. And that is totally not right. DNSSEC does not do anything to provide for confidentiality of your DNS. Okay, All DNSSEC is going to do is provide you with some integrity for your queries. Um, if you want confidentiality for your queries, you're going to need to go in and look at some sort of an encrypted DNS solution like uh, DNS over HTTP or DNS over TLS or um, what is it, a DNS script or something like that. There's another, there's a third one that I probably just said that wrong. So, um, but DNS over HTTP is probably one of the more common ones that we see. So, but that is not the correct answer. Choice number two says that DNSSEC prevents you from going to malicious sites by redirecting your uh, query responses or redirecting you with a query response. And no, that is absolutely not something that DNSSEC does. Again, DNSSEC is about the integrity of the query responses that you're getting back. It's not going to do anything past that to go in and provide you protection. If you want the protection that's described in that, you need to go in and make use of a product like OpenDNS um, or uh, the one that I'm aware of that I make use of is uh, Cisco has a product called Umbrella, uh, which is OpenDNS because they bought them. But um, what it can do is if you try and somehow query a known bad, um, it will actually just resolve it to something else and prevent you from going to it. So uh, that's it. there's a lot more to that, but it, that's the gist of what it can go in and do to help to kind of defend you. Third choice, DNSSEC speeds up your queries by using compression. No. no. That leaves us with the last choice, which is the right choice. Uh, DNSSEC provides for authenticated responses by making use of digital signatures. And that is totally what DNSSEC does. Um, there is a chain of trust that uses asymmetric cryptography for the purposes of going in and signing responses that I will not go into the gory details on in this video because you would hate me because it's pretty involved, but super cool. Um, but that's what you're going to get with DNSSEC is you're going to get authenticated responses that have been digitally signed. And there's nothing confidential about them. They are simply authenticated. Uh, that's going to help reduce the likelihood that somebody can do some kind of uh, poison style attack against your DNS because if you send out a query and you get a forged response, the signature is not going to match when you go in and validate it and you would know that you're looking at something that shouldn't be trusted. Question number two today is the, the items that I'm going to show you, which of them is a difference between DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks compared to client, uh, excuse me, uh, reflected or stored vector uh, cross-site scripting attacks. So what makes DOM different? I'm going to show you some answer choices. Look those over. Click pause. Think about it. When you're ready, click play. We can have a conversation. Answer choice number one says that DOM-based uh, attacks are stored on the server and sent to the client browser when the client visits the site. And that is not accurate. That is what a stored vector attack is. So that is totally not DOM to go in and do that. Choice number two says that DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks will not be visible when you view the source HTML of the web page. And that is true. Okay. In both uh, reflected and stored vector attacks, you actually have typically a script and sent into the uh, targets or the victim's browser and it's actually in the actual HTML. DOM is different. Okay. Now, briefly describe what, what the document object model is if you're not sure what that is. Um, when you have a web page that comes to you, your web browser builds this thing called the document object model. The document object model is uh, it's technically described as an application programming interface, an API that allows developers to go in and write code, usually JavaScript, but it could be Python or something like that too, but usually JavaScript to go in and uh, allow you to be able to change 
the rendering of the HTML in the user's browser um, and make it different than the HTML that was sent back from the server. And for those of us who aren't web developers, if you go in and look at the document object model using a graphical tool, it looks a lot like an HTML document, but it's, it's not. It's a tree-like structure that is created that labels all the different uh, objects that are within the HTML document. And what it does is it exposes them to being able to then be programmatically uh, manipulated by, by the developer. And uh, you, can, you can see the document object model if you, if you want to go and look at this by going in and just going into Google Chrome, right clicking anywhere on a page and choosing inspect. And that pane that opens up on the right hand side um, it's going to say, you know, have an elements tab. And when you click on elements, that's the document object model that you're looking at. That model, the DOM, contains a lot of information that is not, well, none of that information is actually in the HTML. It's built from the HTML, but there's lots of stuff that's in, in there that's not part of the HTML. Um, and what DOM-based cross-site scripting does is it writes the script to that or somewhere in there rather than into the HTML. And the, the, the weakness is, is that systems that aren't set up to defend themselves against this don't expect to see scripts in the DOM. And if somebody is able to get a script to be written to the DOM, the system is just like, oh, hey, script, and executes it. Now, fortunately, most modern client-side browsers have resistance to these things, but that's not to say that they're always going to be impervious because attackers are clever and they're constantly looking for new ways to trick the systems into doing things they didn't intend to do. But that, that's, a, that's a difference. That you, If you look at the fact that um, server-side and client-side scripts are actually in the HTML that's returned, whereas with DOM, it's actually in the document object model, it's not in the HTML. And uh, that's one of the things that makes DOM different, or DOM-based uh, cross-site scripting attacks different than, than the other two. Let's go ahead and look the other answer choices over. Um, the next one says that DOM-based cross-site scripting relies upon tricking a user into clicking on a malicious hyperlink. Um, you certainly can be done that way with DOM, but uh, client-side, or excuse me, uh, I keep saying client-side, um, reflected vector cross-site scripting also um, typically goes in and does that as well. So. Uh, no, that, that doesn't differentiate DOM-based XSS from, from, a, from reflected vector. And then the last choice says that DOM-based cross-site scripting exploits a server-side flaw or server-side bug, whereas um, the other two do stuff that is client-side, and that's just not accurate. So, no. All right, two more questions down. Hope you enjoyed them. Thank you. See you next time.